go, 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 let's get it. I'm a trapping fanatic, that shit automatic, so I cannot turn it on or off. Okay. Bitches all on my dick, then she hop on my dick, I'm like, why you keep hopping on and off? Yo, bitch all on my dick, she be doing the most, I tell her those bitches so extra. And my gun up on me, but I run up on me, niggas, they wanna fight, they some wrestlers. For years, the Uzumaki were feared because of their dojutsu and their chakra reserves. Not only that, but their sealing techniques were incredible, as the Sinugan was a fearsome dojutsu that may have even rivaled the Sharingan if it was around today in the shinobi world. The first grade was simple, yet effective, by making adamantian chains appear around themselves or their enemies, as this will be without any sealing technique or jutsu, making the adamantian chains that would appear behind the user kind of like Doc Ock from Spider-Man in a way. As a second grade allows for the manipulation of chakra in living things. However, there is a catch, a physical contact to use this ability. And once the physical contact is broken, no chakra can be stolen, transferred, or stored. As for the final grade, a battle gear, almost like a Susano-like armor, is created around the user. Unlike the Susano, there is no outer shell that's created. It's almost like the armor of a samurai is placed around the user, but each piece of this armor can be enhanced by the user's chakra to make it stronger, but this drains it even faster. Because of all of this, there was also a secret technique, and this secret technique caused the Uzumaki to be hunted down and their village to be destroyed. Well, with only a few being left, they were forced into hiding. Eventually, a new host was actually found for the Leaf Village, as they needed one for the Nine Tails. And so, they found an Uzumaki to seal it within. But, they were strict with her. A young Kushina went through hellish, well, a hellish childhood, just to be accepted within the village. As even many still feared the red hair and blood of the Uzumaki. And still, the same happens for her falling for Minato Namikaze. History continues to repeat itself, even on the night of their son's birth. However, some of the changes that are made are with Kushina on the verge of death, as when the masked man appears, she looks to him, activating her Sinugan. We see the glow of her eyes, they diminish, as all of her hair would change to black. Uzumaki, secret technique, Shinigami seal, in exchange for her own life, she takes the life of the masked man leaving the rest to Minato. As this isn't like the Reaper Death Seal with summoning the Death God itself. No. With this secret technique, the user, or Uzumaki, becomes the Death God, using their touch of death to take the soul of another person. The fourth Hokage now has a job to finish as he seals the Ninetales within himself and his son, splitting it in half, causing his death as well. Luckily for Minato, he was able to give the final message to his sensei Haruzen, letting him know that the attacker was killed by Kushina, and that the Uchiha can be trusted, as they will be needed to control Naruto and the Ninetales. In this moment, he places Fugaku Uchiha in charge of the leaf before passing away. Haruzen, shocked by all of this, goes over to the masked man, uncovering who he truly was, that being Obito Uchiha. With that, he returns the body to Kakashi, letting him bury his friend and his sensei, as after a funeral is held, Haruzen helps guide the Leaf and Fugaku to a better future. The Uchiha promises to help raise Naruto as much as he can, as time begins to pass, with Naruto growing up a lot better. Many in the Leaf still do resent him, but he doesn't seem to care, as Fugaku makes sure he has friends within Sasuke and a mentor within Kakashi. This Naruto becomes incredibly skilled with chakra control as well as seals. Since there was so much that Kushina left to him, Kakashi put it to use. As now, he has access to both the Obito's Sharingan, making him even stronger. And since the Uchiha were still around as well, a research program, well, they started it, as they were able to teach him how to turn them on and off. But... It still takes an immense amount of chakra to activate them once they were off. As for Naruto, he's already unlocked the first grade 
of the Sinugan at age 9. Yet, he's still very childish with his attitude, using it for pranks and to get around the village, but he does know when to be serious. There is no Uchiha clan massacre, but when Naruto is around 10 or 11, Danzo is banished from the village by Haruzen and Fugaku for his treason. Now, there will be a lot more peace within the Leaf Village, as Naruto becomes a shinobi at the age of 12, and so does Sasuke, as well as many others around their age. The two tied for Rookie of the Year, which meant they couldn't be on the same team. But, luckily, they both knew who their sensei was going to be. Sasuke was on Team 7, with Sakura and Neji, with their sensei being Kakashi. As for Naruto, he was on Team 11, with two other Uchiha, and his sensei was actually Shisui, who had both of his eyes here. Although he did have a scar on his face from his battle with Donzo, Naruto's first test with Shisui was to outrun him while he hunts Naruto and his teammates down for 30 seconds, but that was easier said than done. This test begun and his students were given a head start, and Naruto wasted no time at summoning the adamantian chains to give him a leap as he would throw his two teammates ahead of himself, and then he created three clones that would scatter in different directions. Still, Shisui using the body flicker soon caught up to the three of them, but they evaded capture using any jutsu that they had available. As long as they didn't tag them, they would pass. And once this was over, they did many missions around the leaf village and continued their training. Shisui was very focused on each of their dojutsu, as well as their combat training. They wouldn't have a D-rank mission, like the bridge builder, but they would have a mission to take down rogue shinobi in a nearby town. This is a simple type of mission that they didn't require stealth to do, only teamwork, which meant it was finished within only one day, allowing them to return and continue their training. As for everything else, it remained more or less the same until the Leaf began preparing for the tuning exams. Shisui had his team enter as he believed they were ready. He entrusted Naruto to be the temporary leader, but he actually declined. He stated his other teammate is more suited for that job because he's a half-breed, as this is when his name will be revealed. Sanaka Uchiha, a prodigy born from the Uchiha and the Nara clan. Sanaka accepted his role, and Shisui states to himself that Naruto is growing at a very good rate. The team has a rest period before the exams, but still does some light missions and light training to perfect their jutsu. Because Sanaka is so much of a prodigy, he's able to inherit Shisui's body flicker, and he can't use it as well as a sensei, but he can still make good use of it, especially in the exams. The first test of the exams is more or less easy, as they could find the room with no difficulty thanks to all of them having a dojutsu. Although Naruto is attacked by Lee, who challenges him in a fight, but Naruto declines, stating that their battle is meant to happen later on, when more could view it in all of their glory. Rock Lee would agree, and the two teams would enter the testing room. This Naruto has no trouble at all, even when he does. Sanaka can use his Shadow Possession Jutsu to just make Naruto copy all of his movements. The three pass, moving on to the next test, which will be the Force of Death. And still, there is a Grass Village here, as well as a Sand Village, but there was also the Lightning and Stone who were here, as Fugaku decided it would be best to invite many nations and villages as possible to further their relations with them. And, with no Donzo to disrupt anything, it was made possible being this version of the tuning exams was quite crowded. So when Anka was looking round, she gave some teams one scroll, others two, and some got none. It just made everything more challenging. But there was another change to this exam, in the fact that Fugaku had the Uchiha police force set up all around the forest on the fences. This was, in case anything suspicious were to happen, the Leaf could take care of it. And I feel like this is a good spot to talk about the Uchiha right now. Since their names have been cleared, and one of their own was the Hokage, the Uchiha were seen as heroes within the Leaf Village because of Minato and Fugaku. As Fugaku started to send his clan members out more and more to help out the world and the Leaf Village, 
showing the village that they could do good. Back to the exams. Naruto's team headed inside where they wouldn't be given a scroll at all by Anko. Naruto ran ahead and he made it to the center of the forest with his teammates catching up. Sanako and his other teammate stood guard as Naruto would sit down. As an Uzumaki, he had access to a multitude of jutsu. Some were sensory, and that's what he needed right now. Naruto was able to almost see those within the forest, and he saw a team from the stone who had two scrolls. They set their sights onto them and rushed east. Naruto could feel that they were close, but no one was around. This is when they jumped around the ground to investigate. Naruto's eyes widened, realizing that all of this was a trap. He activates the adamantium chains, slicing through all the stones that were sent at them. The debris blocked their vision, but lucky? Well, lucky for them. They were Uchiha. Sanaka and their other teammate dodged the attacks and landed counters that knocked out their opponents. Sanaka then used the body flicker to find the final one hiding on a branch nearby. He held his katana to his throat, telling him to drop the scrolls or his teammates would die. The young shinobi did as he was told and was then knocked out by Sanaka. He looks down, seeing Naruto about to kill one of them, but stops him. There's no point to kill them. They're already defeated. Naruto nods, but looks annoyed as he was stopped. Sanaka hadn't realized it until now, but Naruto was very aggressive and even bloodthirsty at times. Although he had heard many stories of the Uzumaki being like this, so he believed it was normal. They decided not to rush to the tower. Since they have both scrolls already, they can rest and recharge their reserves, as they believed the next part of the exams would start immediately. As they were sitting down, they then heard someone screaming from the southwest direction. Wait a minute, that sounded like Sakura. They then headed that way to investigate, finding Orochimaru knocking out Neji and Sasuke, leaving the curse mark on Sasuke. Sanaka tells Naruto to protect them, as he's going to send out an alert. Sanaka jumps into the air, using the fireball jutsu and then a lightning kunai to cause an explosion that could be seen from every Uchiha that was standing on guard. This, this would be their signal to notify if things had went wrong. Down at the battle, Naruto is facing Orochimaru, alone, being completely dog-walked. He couldn't keep up with the quick and precise moves of the Sanin. This led to the death of his teammate, who would sacrifice himself for Naruto. Seeing this, right in front of him, Naruto awakened, grade two of the Sinugan, as his eyes turn red and the tips of his hair become black. Oh, I see. You're the child of Kushina Uzumaki and the late fourth Hokage. Ah, those eyes. I've seen them many times before. The Sinugan. Eyes of the Shinigami. You know, it's said that your great ancestors made a deal with the gods of death for a taste of the power that you're using now. Well then, show it to me. Naruto couldn't hear any of what was going on. Only the taste of death was upon his mind. As he reaches out for Orochimaru, ripping the chakra from his arm, shriveling it up, as this will cause the Sanin to jump to a tree. But, he looks down, seeing Naruto hold out his hands, draining it, well, draining the chakra from this tree as well, as Orochimaru would smile. This, this is getting interesting. Then, he holds out his hand, shooting out a large arrow of chakra that went right through the left side of Orochimaru. Still, the Sanin has many ways to recover from this and begins to retreat. He's hunted by the Uchiha police force but others would only survive and arrive to see Naruto on a rampage, believing he was the one to attack and kill his own teammate, as well as injuring Neji and the Hokage's son, they would attack him. Luckily for Naruto, Sanaka stopped him using the shadow possession jutsu. This allowed everyone, even Naruto, to calm down as Sanaka explained to them what had happened and they look to Team 7 as they would take them to the Leafs Hospital. As for Team 10, Naruto stood over the body of his fallen teammate, 
and activated the Sinogon. He places his hand on the ground, ripping the chakra from the grass, leaves, insects, and the trees around him, as many other things, and trying to transfer it into his teammate. None of this works, as his lifeless body just sits there in the arms of Naruto, as he would scream in agony, promising to kill Orochimaru, no matter how long it takes. The Uchiha police force go to take his body with them, but Naruto swats him away. No, he's going to complete this selection and become a Chunin, just like the rest of us. Naruto picks up his body and tells Tanaka to follow him. The two eventually make it to the tower where Shisui wanted to congratulate them once they opened the scrolls. This is when he saw the dead body of one of his students. Who did this? Naruto could only utter the words, Orochimaru, as he knew who it was. Furious, Shisui took his body and reported to the Hokage. As for Sanaka and Naruto, each one of them have a different reaction to the death of their friend. Naruto wanted nothing but revenge, but Sanaka believed it was his fault for not sending the signal faster or earlier. So, all he wanted to do was become stronger to make sure that none of this would ever happen again. And his wish was granted through his three Tomoe Sharingan. Once the rest of the teams made it to the tower, the preliminaries were announced as the first match was Naruto against someone from the grass village. Seeing that very same headband that Orochimaru wore, Naruto didn't tell the officials. No, instead he went to fight, activating his dojutsu. Shisui and Kakashi were talking, watching him take down his opponent. Kakashi asked if he was stable enough to do so, and for once, Shisui didn't have an answer hoping he would hold back, but Sanaka was standing right next to them, letting them know the truth. Naruto is going to kill him. The match begins, and Naruto dodges attacks left and right, using the adamantium chains to maneuver around the arena. Then, he flips into the air, using a wind jutsu to almost cut off his opponent's arm. What the hell was that? It was so sharp. Naruto then lands on the wall, summoning a water tornado that rips through the stadium floor, crashing onto his opponent. As he sent into the wall, Naruto punched him in the stomach. Usually, this would have been enough to finish the job, but Naruto's opponent taunted him, stating that Sasuke will be next. In just that simple line, Naruto was pushed over the edge. He began punching his opponent over and over again, with each time landing his fist was being coated in chakra as this chakra wasn't his own. It was the chakra from his opponent that he was stealing, adding it to his strikes. The wall then began to crack with blood and teeth even flying everywhere, as well as stones. The proctors of this test and the shinobi around had to stop Naruto before it was too late. Luckily, they did so, but this placed the young shinobi into a coma. Many looked down on Naruto as even Fugaku had no words. Naruto just left the stadium with someone following him. Fugaku sat back in his chair, sighing, and Haruzen turned to him. I feared that this would happen. The sadistic nature of his ancestors is finally upon us. Hopefully, Jiraiya can take care of it. The Hokage's eyes widened, looking at Haruzen. So he's already here. Yes, I've actually trained him many times over the years. Jiraiya is a completely different Sanin than the one you have heard of in Legends. He is my successor after all. We see Naruto alone once again, sitting in front of the river. He rips chakra from the grass around him and then restores it, changing the ground from black back to green. What a unique ability. I don't think your mother was very fond of it though. I never seen her use it as much as you do or in the manner that you use it. Naruto turned, seeing the white hair of Jiraiya glow in the sunlight. What do you want, Pervy Sage? Well, I'm actually here on some research. Count me out of it. I remember what happened last time. Naruto stands up, but Jiraiya stops him. But I've actually come to train you to control your bloodlust, as well as the power that your father has entrusted to you. Naruto makes a confused face. What are you... Jiraiya then reveals that he is the Jinchiriki of the Nine Tails. Naruto doesn't believe him at first. That's when Jiraiya explains to Naruto 
that they have to leave immediately and go off to Mount Miyoboku, meaning that Naruto would learn to control his powers to the best of his ability with Kurama. He does his best finding his peace, but when he does, he can only think of the rage that he has for Orochimaru. He can't forgive that man for what he's already done, and Jiraiya notes that this will be difficult with so much around him, as he wonders what Minato would do different. Naruto was born with many more problems than him, and Jiraiya would not acknowledging this. So, he knows he has to train him differently. We skip to the day that Naruto would actually return to the tuning exams and would be facing Rock Lee since he didn't face Gara in the preliminaries. Rock Lee stood waiting for his opponent and Naruto appeared out of nowhere. There you are. Now our battle can begin. Naruto nods and the proctor looks up to the Hokage who looks around at each member of the Uchiha police force and then at some Anbu who were around that he had hidden. The match begins with Rock Lee and Naruto continuously clashing with speed and ferocity. Lee's speed had increased so much because of his training that he was actually able to keep up with Naruto to a very high degree, making it seem as if they were on toe to toe with each other. As for Naruto, he could see through most of the attacks because Lee was after all a simple taijutsu fighter. This led to many stalemates throughout their clashes as early parts of the fight, it seemed that they were equal. Naruto begins to show off more and more of his technique than his power, as he's even able to summon the chains and control them through his emotions. This all led to Lee looking to Guy Sensei. The weights are dropped, and now the real battle begins. Lee begins ripping through Naruto, who really couldn't keep up with his new speed. He was a completely different person. Lee was hitting him from all angles, leaving Naruto in a daze. Shisui then leaned over the railing and shouted, Stop playing around and end it already. Guy seemed confused and almost amused at this, until Naruto caught the punch of Lee and he spit out some blood from his mouth. Lee then fell to the ground unconscious as Naruto casually walks off, being declared the winner. The sensei in the stadium dropped their jaw and Jiraiya is seen hidden, smiling, with Fukusaku on his shoulder. The toad then states, the boy has grown over this past month, and Jiraiya nods, saying he plans to help him grow even further, as he believes Naruto could be the child of prophecy. The matches continue, and since Sasuke was able to recover, he's able to fight Gara, which leads him to lashing out, and the attack on Konoha commences. Although, it's short-lived. Not only are the Uchiha police force standing in Konoha and ready for the attack, but the Hokage himself has a Suzano that takes down Orochimaru's snakes. And we still have Jiraiya here as well. As adding on top of that, we have Haruzen and high level shinobi like Itachi, Shisui, Kakashi, Mike Guy, Azuma, and many others. As for Gara, Sasuke chases after him, but so does Naruto, which, instead of summoning a toad, he reaches Gara using the Uzumaki chains to hold him down. And, standing on top of a tree, he looks into Naruto's eyes to see a shift. Sasuke, the rest is up to you. We then see Sasuke with his curse mark and a three Tomoe Sharingan active, using it to control the tail beast inside of Gara. With this being done, Naruto can now send clones that reinforce the seal placed on Shikaku, making it so that Gara could no longer hear his voice. As by this time, the beast had vanished and the attack on Konoha was over. There isn't too much rebuilding to do, so they need to finish the tuning exams in the following week. And this leads to Naruto, Sasuke, Sanaka, Tamari, and Neji becoming tuning, and eventually Shikamaru becoming a tuning due to his intelligence. With this all wrapping up, Jiraiya tells Naruto that they will be leaving the village for their own journey, and Naruto has still much to learn from him, and he knows it. He bids farewell to the place that he's been calling his home for so long, hoping to return even stronger one day. As during their journey, Naruto meets all sorts of people and makes many connections around the shinobi world. This strengthens the ties between the Jinchurikis and the villages. Naruto himself grows into the young man that his parents had envisioned upon their death. He was no longer rash and quick to anger. He was very collected 
yet childish. As for his strength, Naruto honestly becomes Sonin level, as Jiraiya has trouble keeping up with him. This causes his mentor to even master Sage Mode, and many other things and various techniques. As during this time, they do not get attacked or even hear a word from the Akatsuki, as they don't have many members yet. Naruto himself just knows that he wants to return to the village. He wants to be strong and not let anyone else close to him die. But since they aren't on a time limit like in the canon, Jiraiya decides to travel for an extra year, meaning Naruto was actually 16 going on 17 when he returns. The village seemed more or less the same, but now Tsunade had returned and now she was head of the medical division, making a mandatory statement for all shinobi teams to have a healer on deck. As well then more than half of the shinobi station in the leaf would know medical ninjutsu. If another attack were to happen, more lives could be saved. As for the others, we know Shisui is now heading the Anbu, leading and training any new members. As for Itachi, he was now working towards becoming a Hokage, while Sasuke was training to be the next clan head. Sanaka had gone on his own mission with another team to investigate something else in the land of wind. Well, in the land of wind and fire. Many others who grew up with Naruto were also Joni now. As for Naruto, he didn't care about his rank. For the first thing he did when returning was to visit the grave of his fallen comrade. Naruto gets to his knees, closing his eyes. I will always remember you. That day, you could have been saved if I was not so arrogant. I will not allow that to happen to any of our other friends. Jiraiya smiled, telling Naruto that he will report to the Hokage that they have returned, and Naruto nods, awaiting any type of mission to go on, leading to him running into his friends and having some Ichiraku ramen. Meanwhile, Jiraiya relates to the Hokage that Naruto is on the level of a sign and could not stay at Chunin much longer. Fugaku asks how strong the boy was currently, and Jiraiya sighed, taking a long pause in between the statements, as many in the room who were Jonin Shinobi were already looking at him. If we fought, he would kill me, and I'm certain of it. Many in the room would sit in silence as Fugaku asked what of the nine tails, and Jiraiya lifts his shirt, showing many scars, but he promises that the training was worth it, as Naruto was able to control the beast to a great degree as is even stronger than when Madara had used it. Many in the room wouldn't know what to say, but now the story could continue. As when the Akatsuki do attack Gara and word is sent back to Naruto, he's the first to rush that way. And this, well, it goes way better than in canon because Naruto here has access to many sensory abilities as well as KCM, just the first basic state of it, which was still unstable, but he could use it for long periods of time and Naruto would catch up to Daedara and Sasori, killing both of them and also saving Gara before he has the tail beast extracted from him. As they return to the sand, Gara would send out word to all of the Jinchiriki as well as the Kage to be on alert for these men. As Naruto and Gara are able to communicate with the rest of the Jinchiriki, having their own meeting in this own separate world or pocket dimension that they talk through as this makes it faster to communicate with each village, as this is revealed what Jiraiya and Naruto were doing during the time skip, as now many other things would take place, with the Akatsuki being hunted down, member by member, but they aren't hunted down by the shinobi villages around the world. No, Fugaku is a different type of Hokage, and says that he will handle it, as it seems this is their problem to deal with as many of the people that are in the Akatsuki stem from the problems that the Leaf has created over the years, so it's time that Akage finally steps up and takes action, making it right instead of leaning on the world and others to do their bidding. Fugaku sends out elite squads with members like Kakashi, Sasuke, even Jiraiya and Tsunade participate, as well as Shisui and Itachi. And you also have those like Naruto and Tsunaka, who go on these missions with Might, Guy, Rock Lee, Neji, and many others, while like Shikamaru, who accompany them in their elite squad known as the Ronin, who hunt down 
each remaining Akatsuki members until there are none left, as we see the final two are of course Conan and Pain. Naruto attacks Pain on his own, using KCM to take down each path. Having to do so with little difficulty, he rips through them, but he feels it. None of these almost clone-like figures, they're not the real Pain. They're someone else. Someone else is hiding from them. Naruto would, of course, capture Conan, and he would use his sensory abilities to find the real Nagato, walking into his hideout to see him in such a pathetic state with the Rinnegan eyes. But now, now what would he do? There's nothing left, and Nagato doesn't know what he should do. Should he give up now? Should he attack? Should he call on more allies? But there are none. Well, none that are truly his allies, I should say. Nagato and Naruto have a very long conversation about the world, about peace, if it could truly be achieved by these means of the Leaf Village. And Naruto at first is hesitant, but then he remembers all of his fallen comrades, what his parents died for. It would be wrong to him if he was not able to promise peace to this person who was standing right in front of him. Naruto and Nagato, they seem so similar. As Naruto notices the red hair, he must be an Uzumaki. As well as his dojutsu, it just must have evolved somehow. And Naruto wonders, if someone else wasn't in his life like Fugaku and the, the others that he's made friends, no, his family, he would have turned out just like this because of the shinobi world. So in this moment, Naruto finds his true ninja way, stabbing his hand and promising to Nagato that he will achieve some sort of peace across this land. And with this, Nagato can die happy alongside Konon, having his body buried here as he wants his body to be in the place where this declaration was made and for Naruto to visit it when peace is truly achieved. Months later, we see it in a dark, creepy place, two people standing in front of hundreds, hundreds of thousands of clones and tanks overlooking this wide area. Are they ready? Kabuto turns to see Danza walking from the shadows. Yes, this should be soon. Well then, it seems that all preparations are made. Now, it is time for action. They then hear another figure taking footsteps. As is one of the guards, Kabuto turns telling him that he shouldn't have entered here as now he must die. And Danzo holds his hand. This stops Kabuto from throwing a poison kunai as they watch this guard drop to the ground, and behind him is Naruto. You know, it took a while to find you two. I figured if the Akatsuki did find many members, that you two would be a part of it. Well, it seems that many things lead up to this point, and I've made a promise. Naruto then shows the scar on his hand. It'll be my ninja way to restore peace to this land, true peace that all shinobi can actually live together, as well as the Jinchuriki that you have tried to hunt down. I do this for them and my fallen comrades who you have taken from me. Naruto activates KCM using a giant Rasengan combined with a Biju Bomb to slam down onto the ground, destroying the entire area, as well as killing Donzo, who doesn't have the Izanagi here. So, he would die alongside Kabuto and the hundreds of clones that they have made in this facility, leaving a crater in this spot of the land. As Naruto wipes off himself, he goes away. As it begins raining, he visits the grave of Nagato and Konan. And here is where Naruto would take off his shinobi headband, tying it around the gravestone that he's made. I'll be back for it later, but now, you can keep it as a memento of our friendship, as you were a true shinobi, Nagato. You just were led down the wrong path. But peace has been achieved, and I hope now that you can see it wherever you are. Naruto then walks away from the gravestone, but he feels something. 
Peace has been achieved, but there is something still lurking. Lurking in the background. As this is where we see Black Zetsu, far away, trying to figure out a plan to revive someone. But with no Rinnegan, no Nagato, no Obito, no Madara, no anyone. This is going to take longer than expected. But this is where our story will end. I hope you all enjoyed, and if you did, like, comment, and subscribe, and tune in for the next one. This is Zero, and I'll catch you all later.